سعيد جدا بوجودي مع حضراتكم وشرف كبير جدا ان انا اكون موجود معاكم النهارده وشرف ليا اختيار كليه ان انا اقول محاضره في التنظيم بصراحه هايل جدا وانا مبسوط جدا بيه. انا هستاذن حضراتكم ان انا يعني هكملها كلها كجزء واحد وبعد كده في الاخر انا تحت امر حضراتكم في اي كويشنز او كومنتس او وات ايفر بس يعني يا ريت نكملها كلها مره واحده الاول ويا ريت لو الصوت مش واضح في اي وقت او كده حد بس يعرفني بعد اذن حضراتكم. Um, okay, so I'm speaking about oral cancers, peers, and bed folds. The oral cavities, the entry of the upper ear of the digestive tract starts from the lips, the side walls, the buccal mucosa, the roof, the heart palate, the floor, anterior two thirds of the tongue, plus the floor of the mouth, plus the gingiva, or the alveolar margin, or the gums. Posterior third of the tongue, which is the base of the tongue, is not in the oral cavity, it's in the oropharynx. As the soft palate, which is not in the oral cavity, is posterior to the oral cavity in the oropharynx. The oral cavity has complex functions, swallowing, uh, speech, deglutition, mastication, major aspiration, major, major, major complex functions. Oral cancers represent the six most common cancer worldwide. It represents 30 to 40 percent of head and neck cancer. Uh, around 200,000 patients uh, yearly diagnosed with oral cancers, and unfortunately, half of them, like 100,000 this period. So 2,000, like um, one quarter million, and half of them die from the disease. Many risk factors uh, are there for oral cancers, main, mainly, mainly smoking and alcoholism. Some special habits like chewing nut kit, and um, I think in Yemen and uh, some parts of India. Uh, oral tobacco use, uh, periodontal disease, radiation, and immunodeficiency. And a very, very important question is human papilloma virus test recommended for oral cancers? Uh, the answer is uh, it's associated with incidence rate of tonsillar tumors, sometimes tongue cancer but the ratio of HPV infection related to oral cancers is very low, and there is no or unclear relationship between the pathology and the prognosis. So actually the answer is no. Human papilloma virus testing is not recommended for oral cancer, unlike the oropharyngeal tumors where HPV testing is very, very, very important. But for oral cancers, it's not a routine to do. As you see the incidence worldwide, the pink one is for the females, the blue one is for the males, and all over the world, there is a high instance of oral cancers in males more than in females. And as you can notice from the chart, the highest incidence for oral cancers are in Europe and America, and this is attributed to uh, the habit of smoking and alcohol consumption, sure, more than the Arabian countries, Asian and African countries. So it's more common in Europe and USA, less common in Asia and Africa, but anywhere males are more prone to oral cancers than females. More than 90% of oral cancers are squamous cell carcinomas. Some rare types like adenocarcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, mucoepidermoid carcinomas, and we have experience of some mucosal melanomas, rare entity, but we have a uh, beta case series in uh, my center, oncology center. So uh, most of the guidelines and treatment options and everything for oral cancers are mostly through squamous cell carcinomas being more than 90%. And other pathologies are usually following the same guidelines for the squamous cell carcinoma because they are too small numbers of cases to establish a guideline specific for them. So the point is that more than 90% squamous cell carcinoma is oral cancer. Uh, I think you made these uh, pre-cancer stations uh, in your practice daily. Uh, oral cancers might not start a de nouveau cancer. It may be uh, on a pre-cancer stage, like here, erythroplechia, and it's very common in the population. And what's more serious and what's more prone to malignant transformation, erythroplechia. Uh, sorry, uh, leukoplechia and erythroplechia. Erythroplechia is more prone to malignant transformation. So it may be the pre-cancer stage that predisposed to squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity. Clinical manifestations are greatly based on the location. Uh, the oral cavity may be six parts or six uh, definite separate parts. Each of them actually deserve um, uh, a whole day to discuss, but we will try to 
make a collectively uh, like brief summary for all parts of the oral cavity. Clinical manifestations differ according to the location. Tumors of the tongue have different uh, clinical presentations of the buccal mucosa, the, the alveolar margin, and so. Uh, so the location and the extent of the primary tumor attribute to the variation in the clinical symptoms. But most commonly, there are uh, mouth sores, ulcers, uh, loosening of the teeth, dysphagia, and some swelling of problem. And sometimes bleeding, bleeding from the oral cavity. For example, in tongue cancer, sometimes a patient present with regular pain with or without swelling dysfunction. And sometimes uh, when the tumor invades deeply in the deep muscles of the tongue. So it's mostly if pain happened with tongue cancer, it's mostly it's an advanced stage to the tumor. The buccal mucosa cancer can be presented with parotitis, inflammation, inflammation of the parotid gland, and it's very clear due to the relation of the parotid duct, the stenson's duct that open in the oral cavity over the upper second molar tooth. If the tumor is near, causing compression of the duct or blockage of the tongue uh, of this duct, it may be presented with just inflammation of the parotid gland. Floor of mouth cancer with its relation to the Wharton's duct, the duct of the submandibular gland, the same. Maybe may you have a submandibular swelling and the problem is not a submandibular pathology. The problem is compression or uh, blockage of the duct from a buccal uh, floor of mouth cancer. Gingival cancers, the upper gingiva at the early stage, uh, mostly it's misdiagnosed with oral infections, always treated with antibiotics, and it's already, it's not an infection, it's a true cancer. Lip, I know lip uh, is a bit far from your interest, so we will not focus much on lip cancers which represents entry of the uh, oral cavity, but actually in the guidelines and in the management and in the prognosis and everything, lip cancers is more, more with the skin cancers of the head and neck than actual oral cancers. Lip cancers have a better prognosis than oral cancers, the rest of the parts of the oral cavity. So sometimes uh, what's interesting is that sometimes lip cancer is presented with numbness of the chin, and this is due to mental nerve infiltration. So as you see, clinical symptoms differ according to the site, uh, plus the original tumor, the primary tumor, which will be presented by mass, by an ulcer, or a precancerous lesion with long standing and gut malignant transformation. Intraoral examination of oral cancer is very important, very, very, very important tool in early diagnosis and uh, like uh, you have to use a tongue depressor, you have a good light, and you have to expose all the parts and examine all the parts, not just the diseased part. If you have a right-sided ulcer or something, you have to examine all the oral cavity. You have to pull down the tongue with a tongue depressor and you must have a good light source. Also, not only intraoral examination is important for oral cancers, extraoral examination is not less important. You have to examine the facial skin, the scalp, below the hair, major salivary glands, and it's very clear the relation of the duct of the parotid and the submandibular gland to the oral cavity. Uh, the sensation, as I told you, because some tumors infiltrate the nerves, so the sensation of the forehead, the cheeks, the upper lip, chin, lower lip should be assessed to find uh, an evidence of tumor invading a nerve. And what's very, 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 very important is the lymph nodes of the neck. And what's interesting in oral cancers is the multiple primary tumors. You may have at the same time, tumor in the tongue, tumor in the oropharynx, tumor in the upper esophagus, and so. It's called uh, synchronization or simultaneous cancers or second primaries. So full upper aero digestive tract examination is very important for oral cancers. Not just the oral cavity, but it's better to have a band endoscopy to examine all the upper aero digestive tract. Okay, back to the lymph nodes, which is a crucial um, item in assessment and in diagnosis and in treatment, uh, the lymph nodes of the neck. Because as you know, malignant tumors or cancers spread by three patterns. Direct to spread, malignant tumors doesn't respect uh, the anatomy or the pathology. They invade locally, can eat everything surrounding. And the second way of spread is the lymphatic spread through the lymphatic vessels to the lymph nodes of the neck and by the blood, blood spread to distant organs, mainly the lung, the chest. Oral cavity love to metastasize 
to the chest. Yes, it's a bit late metastasis, but if oral cancer metastasize, they will go to the lung first. Some rare types sites of metastasis include the liver, include the bone, but the commonest, the commonest site of distant metastasis represented by the, the chest, the lung. Go back to the lymph nodes. These are the anatomical classifications of the lymph nodes of the neck, uh, just by regions. Actually, this anatomical staging is not our way to judge the cervical lymph nodes. This is just anatomy. We studied in the anatomy in the first year of medicine, uh, pre-auricular, post-auricular. Uh, it's, not, it's not the classification of the cervical lymph nodes. The surgical staging is represented by this diagram. Cervical lymph nodes, lymph nodes in the neck are seven levels, starting from level 1A, submental lymph nodes, level 1B, submandibular lymph nodes, level 2, 3, and 4, and this big muscle is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, starting from the mastoid prostate to the sternal head and the clavicular head. And it's a very, very strong muscle. God put this muscle in a human's body for protection of the carotid cheese, the main neurovascular bundle of the neck. Behind this muscle lies the jugular vein, the internal jugular vein, where lymph nodes usually sleep upon the internal jugular vein. They are classified into three groups, two, three, and four, upper, middle, and lower jugular lymph nodes. So 1A submental, 1P submandibular, two, three, and four jugular lymph nodes, upper, middle, and lower. Here is the posterior triangle. Here is the trapezius muscle. And the space between the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the trapezius muscle is the posterior triangle of the neck, where level five lymph nodes lie, posterior triangle lymph nodes. Level six and level seven are the central compartment lymph node. And actually, they are very, very exclusively private for the thyroid gland and the larynx. The oral cavity never metastasized to the central compartment of the neck. The primary zone of lymphatic drainage from the oral cavity are level one, level two, three. And when these three levels are heavily metastasized, they go to level four and level five. So level one, level two, level three must be very carefully examined in oral cancers. Uh, you can never find a posterior triangle lymph node metastasis without level one and level two because they are the nearest and they are the main lymphatic drainage basis for the oral cavity. So level one, level two, three are the main areas of lymphatic drainage from the oral cavity. So when cancer occurs, lymph nodes will metastasize in these areas. Level 1A, submental, submandibular, upper and middle jugular lymph nodes. No, no metastasis to the central compartment. And the question now is how to diagnose, how to diagnose an oral cancer. I may have uh, an ulcer, uh, something strange. I, I, I have a suspicious, clinical suspicious. I have a provisional diagnosis, but how can I have a short diagnosis? How can I diagnose a patient with oral squamous cell carcinoma or the other rare types? Actually, we have two main tools for uh, diagnosis. Here is the, for, uh, the primary tumor and for the lymph nodes in the neck. For the lymph nodes, it's very easy to do a fine needle aspirate. So just aspirate some cells and examine them under the microscope. And if they are metastatic lymph nodes, you will find uh, a malignant cells in this lymph node, in this aspirate. This is for the lymph nodes. And uh, it's not a routine uh, to take a fine needle from the cervical lymph nodes in our practice here. We depend on the radiology as we will speak later. But in most guidelines to do a neck dissection, you must be preceded by a pathology from the lymph node. So back to the oral cavity itself, the primary tumor, uh, many, many types of biopsies, uh, wedge biopsy, or it's called incisional biopsy, to take just a part of the, of the lesion to diagnose, or excisional biopsy to remove all the lesion. Actually, excisional biopsy is just for very small lesions where you can take all the lesion as a biopsy and to diagnose and at the same time for excision, but it's not the routine. Incisional biopsy or wedge biopsy, like this photo, is, is, is the commonest practice. You have to take just part of the tumor for diagnosis. And when you diagnose, you start the, opt the optimum surgical treatment. Which biopsy, uh, you have to take care. You must take part of the normal tissue with the disease, the tissue. So if you have an ulcer, you have to imagine the pizza slice uh, with the base outside the ulcer on the healthy tissue and the apex inside the ulcer. Avoid biopsy from the center of the ulcer where excessive necrosis and degeneration happens. Always, always attack the periphery. Take from the 
peripheral from the edge of the ulcer with the surrounding healthy tissue. This is called the wedge biopsy or the incisional biopsy, just incision, just part of the lesion to diagnose. We are not doing the surgery, we just want to diagnose. So these are the main diagnostic tools, the wedge biopsy or incisional biopsy from the tongue, from the floor, from the buccal, whatever, and uh, plus or minus fine needle aspirate from the cervical lymph node. Uh, so uh, the patient will not be happy when we diagnose him with oral cancer. Uh, actually, we diagnose to treat, but we treat based on, and this is the most important point, we treat based on the staging. So we diagnose cancer to treat cancer, and we treat cancer upon the stage. Every stage has its own treatment. And the very, very common staging is a T and M. T stands for the tumor, the primary tumor, N for the lymph nodes, and M for the distant metastasis. As you see here, both patients have tongue cancer, and both have the same pathology. This is a very small ulcer at the lateral edge of the tongue, just even maybe one centimeter. It's a squamous cell carcinoma. And here, an ulcer, squamous cell carcinoma, mostly involving all the right side of the tongue. They both have the same pathology, the same diagnosis, but sure, sure, they will not have the same treatment because their stage is different. This is stage one oral cancer. This is stage three B, as we will speak later. So what I want to uh, tell you, we diagnose to treat and we treat based on the staging and we just will know now how to stage. So the same diagnosis, but not the same treatment. The same diagnosis, but not the same, the same treatment. Two centimeter ulcer in the buccal mucosa, an extensive ulceration of the buccal mucosa. Both are squamous cell carcinoma. Both have different treatment strategy. So how, how now, how to stage? We need to stage, we need to know the T, we need to, to know the N, and we need the metastasis because Maybe if the case is metastatic, if the tumor has spread to the tongue, no, no rule for surgery. Surgery will not add a survival benefit, as we're gonna know later. So uh, I will not uh, exhaust you with much details in um, oncological pattern, but just you have to know that we have staging for the T, TX, TIS, T1, 2, 3, and 4. T4A, T4B, locally advanced or moderately advanced tumor. Usually T4P tumors are non-resectable tumors. You cannot resect or you can resect a part. And it's not a rule. If you are going to remove part of the tumor and leave part, don't do this. Better to leave it alone. Uh, the staging, staging is American Joint Committee of Cancer, AGCC. And actually there are eight versions for the staging. The eighth edition is just two years later and the only is a DOI, depths of invasion. It's not the matter of surface diameter. If a tongue ulcer, tongue cancer with three centimeter surface and depths of invasion infiltrating the muscle by two millimeter and another ulcer one centimeter, but the depths of invasion is more than one centimeter, for example, the one centimeter ulcer, the smaller diameter, but more depths of invasion is a more stage, is a higher stage. So the only change in the, between the seventh and eighth edition is the DOI, the depths of invasion. This is for the T, the primary tumor. So what's for the N? We have NX, N0, and one, two, three. The only change, again, between the eighth and seventh edition is extra nodal extension. A lymph node of maybe four centimeter, but with intact capsule is less risky and less stage than a two centimeter lymph node with extra nodal extension. The capsule is opened and tumor emerges from the lymph node. This is a very, very, any lymph node with extra nodal extension is upstaged away from its diameter. Few years ago, we are treating cancer according to cancer pathology, but nowadays all the treatment is going to the cancer biology biology. We may have two patients with the same biology, with, with the same pathology, the same staging, but one patient die after two years, the other patient die after five years. The same stage, the same uh, pathology. But these are the differences. The depths of invasion, the extra neural extension, and who knows what's ongoing. For the distant metastasis, M0 and M1. M0, no distant metastasis. M1, we have distant metastasis. 
M1 is not is not a surgical candidate. If we have a metastatic disease, me, our job as surgeons is not there. The role is chemo radiotherapy or palliative treatment. The prognosis is very bad and it's a dismal disease. This will happen very soon. If a patient with oral cancer have distant metastasis, and I told you the most common site will be the chest, lung. And then we put the tumor T watt plus N watt plus M watt, and we have a final staging if it's stage zero, stage one, two, three, four, four A, four B, or four C. Every stage has a protocol of management. The same diagnosis, but staging, staging affects the treatment. Actually, the treatment is based on the stage. So again, we diagnose cancer to treat, and we treat based on the stage. So how to stage? Very simply for the metastasis, CT chest or chest X-ray for early cases, CT chest uh, to prove or exclude lung metastasis. For the primary tumor, uh, many debate occur with, uh, if we're gonna do CT or MRI in our practice and most of the guidelines. And uh, by the way, NCCN guidelines, National Cancer Comprehensive Network guidelines are our guide the American guidelines. Uh, we don't prefer much the European guidelines in oral cancers. Uh, it's schools, but we follow more the NCCN. Uh, it's always updated every two years, I think. And now it's the 18th edition, I think, for the NCCN guidelines. Uh, for CT or MRI, to our experience, and most agree to do MRI for the soft tissue. If you have a tongue, if you have a buckle or something, do an MRI, especially the tongue. No tongue surgery without MRI. You may see something on the surface, but inside the tongue substance, it's a totally different disease. So uh, MRI is the primary tool. If you have any suspicious or any clinical manifestation of bone infiltration, you have to do a CT better. So uh, if a tumor uh, infiltrating the mandible, if a tumor infiltrating the upper alveolus, the maxilla, CT with uh, 3D formatting is perfect for this purpose. MRI and CT, it's an, uh, a, a usual debate. We solve this MRI for the soft tissue, any bone involvement or any suspicious of, all, of bone involvement go to go for CT. For the neck, CT and MRI can accurately diagnose uh, the lymph node metastasis, abnormal change in the lymph node in the neck, but a very simple and very cheap and 99% accuracy is ultrasound. Just, just neck ultrasonography can suspect a lymph node metastasis. And, and as we see, if you have a lymph node metastasis, radiologically, we can prove pathologically by a fine needle aspirin. Uh, so now we diagnose. Now we diagnose the cancer and we staged it. We have a tongue, for example, tongue squamous cell carcinoma, stage two. So what are the treatment options? What goes to uh, fight oral cancers? Uh, actually, oral cancer, actually, all, all cancers cannot be treated alone. We need to sit together, we need to see, we need to have a multidisciplinary uh, team approach for management of oral cancer and books, many, many books, not just papers, books for just how to deal as a group for oral cancer patients. You are not alone, the patient, your patient is the blue, is in the middle, the surgeon, many, many, many specialities should sit together and discuss the patient's um, plan and the prognosis and follow up and everything. You have not, you, you, you should never uh, act alone. Many, many, many specialities are included. Head and neck surgeon, radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, plastic or reconstructive surgery, uh, nursing, dentistry, you, 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 you are actually the primary health care. You are our first tool to diagnose and to manage. Uh, Prosodentics, uh, rehabilitation, speech therapy, swallowing therapy, Nutritionist, many, many uh, oral cancer is a very tedious work and very, very hard job to do. Many, many options uh, for treatment, many, many options for reconstruction, for treatment, uh, surgical, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, all of this. And even after surgery, we need uh, a rehabilitation therapy, speech, uh, nutrition, swallowing, how you can swallow when you remove half your tongue, how you can uh, masticate when you remove your mandible. Uh, all of these options should be discussed on a single table with the patient inside the table. 
So what are the treatment options? Starting from the surgery, and surgery is the cornerstone for treatment of oral cancers. Surgery, uh, I, I put them in order of importance. Surgery is the cornerstone, followed by radiotherapy. Almost always 90% of oral cancers receive radiotherapy. Chemotherapy come to a less extent. Uh, under clinical trials, I'm not sure uh, value, the target therapy and the immunotherapy. So back to the most important, surgery is the cornerstone. Always radiotherapy is adjunct treatment, always after surgery. To, to uh, deliver chemotherapy for oral cancer patients, either new adjuvant or adjuvant. New adjuvant means that you have a very advanced tumor. You want to downstage the tumor to be amenable for surgical resection. So you may give chemotherapy before surgery in such case, and which is called new adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, chemotherapy after surgery is called the adjuvant treatment. You may get, do surgery, then give chemotherapy. If lymph nodes are positive, if, 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 and many, many indications, it's not my experience, it's, it's a guidelines. If you have blah, 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 you have to give chemotherapy. If you have what, you have to give radiotherapy and so on. Uh, as I told you, NCCN guidelines are our source. So back to the treatment options, surgery is the first one, the main one, followed by radiotherapy, chemotherapy in some cases, clinical trials not well approved, target therapy and immunotherapy. These are our treatment options for oral cancer. Regarding surgery, most of oral cancers not only require resection of the tumor, they need, uh, after resecting the tumor, oncologic resection, the rule is to remove the tumor with at least one centimeter free safety margin. So you have you remove, to remove your tumor with one centimeter all around. And what's very, very important is the 3D safety margin. You have to take lateral, as you will see the photos, lateral, medial, anterior, posterior. And what's more important is the dips. And always remember DOI, dips of invasion. The dips, so your safety margin is 3D. It's not a 2D or 1D. This is for the T, for the tumor. Don't forget the neck. Neck is an always, always, always an adjunctive to oral surgery. You, you attack the tumor in the oral cavity and you attack the lymph nodes in the neck. The, main, the basic principle for surgical excision is wide local excision, which is a very, very important term in our practice, WLA. Just excision means if you said you have an excision of the ulcer, you remove the ulcer with no uh, concern to the safety margin. But when you said, I did a wide local excision, this means that you remove the ulcer with at least one centimeter free safety margin. So wide local excision, a very, very important term. Don't do excision, you are treating a cancer, a malignant tumor. Do wide local excision. This is the main basic principle for surgery. After your surgery, you will find a defect in the oral cavity. The oral cavity is a complex anatomy. Uh, most of the tumors are not closed primarily. You cannot remove and very simply close. It's not that easy. Many, 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 many uh, defects or after resection, you will need to reconstruct. And in reconstruction, the art of reconstruction, always remember the goals of reconstruction. The first thing is the donor site morbidity. You should not close a defect in the oral cavity and make a defect in the face, for example. The donor site, the place where you take the flap or something, as I will show you, is the first goal. Don't uh, like um, do a good thing for the oral cavity and do a bad thing for the other side. The second thing is the functional outcome. And lastly comes the aesthetic outcome. We are not a plastic surgeon. Uh, I'm not concerned with pain, with obesity or something, liposuction and so. Uh, our primary goal is not the cosmetic outcome. Our primary goal is the functional outcome. So for example, if I have two flaps, one flap give me a superior functional outcome and the other flap give me a lower functional outcome, but a more cosmetic outcome, I will choose the functional outcome. Uh, I is not me, I is the guidelines, is, is the science. Donor site morbidity is the first goal in reconstruction. The functional outcomes is the second goal and the aesthetic outcome is the third goal. So the approach to the oral cavity, I'm going to do a surgery. How can I approach the oral cavity? We have from the sample to the uh, complex, we have the transoral approach, no, no incisions in the face, just you retract the lips, 
and you expose the oral cavity, and this is a transoral or peroral approach. And it's suitable for small lesions at the lateral border of the tongue. Uh, if you have a posterior lesion and you have to go posteriorly in the oral cavity, the transoral approach will not give you adequate exposure. You have to do mandibulotomy. You have to open the mandible, open the lip to reach a posterior defect, a posterior tumor. And here is the lower cheek flap. And this is always done when we need to do the neck to remove the leg lymph nodes. We can do a lip splitting incision with the lower cheek flap like this. We, have, we may do a lower uh, lip splitting incision with an upper cheek flap. So this is the contrary for this. And the visor flap, where you have a transverse incision all over the neck and you expose all the mucosa over the mandible and you go and you have a major access to the oral cavity. So these are the surgical approaches to the oral cavity. How can I remove something from the oral cavity? Starting from transoral, mandibulotomy, lower cheek flap, upper cheek flap, and visor flap. Uh, I had the honor to uh, to to have uh, this publication with a pioneer surgeon all over the world, uh, Dr. Luca Calabresi from Italy, for anatomically paced transoral surgical approach to early stage oral tongue squamous cell carcinoma. Just transoral approach, but on a specific anatomical considerations. It's not just you go to remove the tumor all around. No, you have a certain anatomical consideration. I had the honor to do this. So uh, some cases to apply, for example, floor of mouth cancer, like this. You have uh, here the tongue, you have an ulcer here uh, at the floor of the mouth, uh, maybe one to two centimeter. In an edentulous patient, very old patient, very fragile patient, you have to remove the tumor with safety margin. This is for this. So you have to go away from the tumor at least one centimeter from all directions and the dips. Don't never forget the dips. And this is wide local excision. Now you remove the tumor. You have to shake the neck. You are going to do a prophylactic or therapeutic neck dissection or not. And it's not finished. This is the endotracheal intubation. This is the defect after restriction. You have now the tongue and you have the rest of the floor and the adverse ridge, but you don't have part of the floor. So you have to construct, in this case, we chose uh, the defect was small, the patient was edentulous, old age, fragile patient, we use a primary closure, just a very simple primary closure. Uh, unlike here, here is a strange case. She's a young female, 45 years. Here is the ulcer. I'm not sure if it's clear in your, um, in your eyes, but here is the ulcer. It's a mucoepidermoid carcinoma. It's not a squamous cell carcinoma. It's from the minor salivary glands in the floor of the mouth. So here, wide local excision with the dips where it's in an effect like this. You have a compartmental defect like this. The neck is open to the oral cavity, no floor of the mouth. This is called compartment. You remove the tumor. Here is called T and the tract. T N, the space in the floor of the mouth between the T and the N, where actually the tumor emerged from the minor cerebral gland, mucoepidermoid carcinoma. And sure, this is incompatible with life. Uh, the oral cavity, oral cervical face plan, the oral cavity is open to the neck. So how to close this In this case, I, I, I'm sure it's we have this flap based on a very small artery here, and then we move this from behind this tunnel and go to the oral cavity. To be more clear, this is a flap harvest, and this will be closed primarily because you have redundant skin here. And just this, this is a pedicle the flap because the artery is here, the blood vessel is here. This, this part specifically will form the tongue, the new tongue, as you see here. So we close the defect with a, de with a flap from the supraclavicular area. Unlike the, owl, the first case, simple excision and the closure, primary closure. Here we have a do, to do a major flap to close the defect. It's called a subraclavicular artery island flap. This is the flap. And this is a patient uh, one and a half months after surgery, the tongue and complete healing of the flap and the closure of the floor of the mouth. Uh, another case like this, you have a floor of the mouth, squamous cell carcinoma in the midline. Uh, another option for reconstruction is the radial forearm flap, but unlike the first one, it's not a big flap. This is a free flap. You take this part, this will close. 
this will be the floor of the mouse later, but you have to anastomose the artery and vein here, uh, specifically the radial artery and vena comitans with the vessels of the neck. A very, very, very lengthy operation, a very, very risky operation, a very, very technically demanding surgery. Free flaps like this. Here, the shoulder is intact. We didn't take the flap from here. We take it from the arm of the patient, radial forearm flap like this. And sure, this is the, the neck incision for the cervical lymph node and the flap in sitting. Uh, hard ballot cancer, actually, we don't have too much hard ballot cases, but when we have hard ballot cases, it's usually a very advanced case and a very, uh, like a very destructive surgical option. Removing this tumor, you may remove the maxilla, and mostly you remove the maxilla. This is an advanced tumor where the maxillary antrum, this have a foundation inside the maxillary antrum. A very nice case of mucosal melanoma, like this case, and you know melanoma is a very, very aggressive cancer. You have to do a major surgery, and he's a young patient, you have to do a major surgical job. We removed almost most of the maxilla with the hard bullet. For alveolar margin cancers, uh, again, uh, from my experience, from my point of view, tongue cancers followed by alveolar cancers are the most aggressive and the most uh, bad prognosed cancer. Like you see here, an old male patient have a large ulcer here on the lingual side and buccal side of the alveolar margin with loosening of the taste and a very advanced tumor actually. As you see here in the CT, this part of the mandible is eroded by the ulcer. The same here, no, no bone here. The bone is almost removed with the tumor. This is our plan, lower cheek flap, the lip splitting and lower cheek flap. And here from inside is the tumor itself. This is the tumor with safety margin. You can notice here the free mucosa. Here is the safety margin. This is the tumor, the end of the tumor. And here is the safety margin from here, 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 and so. This is the tongue. And we will cut here to complete all the tumor. And as you see, we cut the mandible. We remove the mandible. And uh, I'm sure if I will speak about the maxilla and mandible, we will take, I will exhaust you very much. So I just concentrated on the soft tissue, especially the, the mandible and maxilla are the bony skeleton and not a constituent of the oral cavity itself. So back to the case. Uh, here is the malignant ulcer with the mandible. And here you can see the cervical lymph nodes. In block, in block resection, almost always remove all in continuity. Don't cut lymphatic channels. Don't cut within the tumor. You will have aggressive, aggressive recurrence. If you do so, remove in block, just one piece. Here is the operative specimen with the lymph nodes. And here is the tumor itself. Here is the safety margin, and as you can see all around. But <laughs> after resection, we have a major defect. Uh, the tongue, you have no mandible here. This is a stern, uh, the digastric muscle. This is the carotid artery. This is the internal jugular vein. This is the spinal accessory nerve. How to close this defect? You need to restore the continuity of the mandible. You need to close the oral cavity. So in this case, we choose a big flap, bulky flap from the chest wall. The pectoralis major myocutaneous flap and actually Pectoralis major myocutaneous flap is the workhorse. When we lose every hope, go to the pectoralis major myocutaneous flap. And this, actually this part will go through this tunnel and close the defect. An old patient, uh, like 70 years old, will have radiotherapy. And so uh, we choose the simplest way to reconstruct his mandible, just a plate and a screw for support. And the, the muscle will be put here, the flap, like this. This is the flap. This is a pectoralis major myocutaneous flap, completing the tongue from here and the oral mucosa and covering the plate. Don't leave an exposed plate. Don't leave uh, or put a bulky flap always on plates. Here is the lower cheek flap, the lip splitting and the lower cheek flap primary closed. And here is the donor site for the pectoralis major muscle is primarily closed. This is pectoralis major myocutaneous flap. I will not talk, speak a bit about lipsers. I know it's away from your uh, interest, but just take a look for uh, cancer like this, cancer like this. Uh, maybe you have a small defect like this. The lip, the lip is specific than any other organ in the oral cavity. The lip is, you need a mucosa from inside. 
the muscle or the tissue in between and the skin from outside. Uh, in small lesions, we do a V-shaped incision like this and we can close primarily. Some microstomia will occur, but it works. And most important thing is close in layers. Close the mucosa from inside, the first layer, close the muscle, approximate the muscle, the middle layer, and then the skin. Uh, a major lip cancer with a major defect, exposing the gingiva, the chin, local flaps, and this is the result one month after. A cancer involving most of the lower lip. This is the defect after resection of the lower lip cancer, and this is the incision and the lymph node of the neck. You have a defect like this. I chose a nasolabial flaps from the bilateral nasolabial crisis, and one is for the lip from inside and one for the lip from outside, primary closure of the donor sites, and here is the patient one month later. Back to the buccal mucosa, which is very, very challenging in resection and reconstruction, actually. A very small ulcer here. It's an adenoid cystic carcinoma of the buccal mucosa, a very rare entity. Here is the defect. After excision of this ulcer with wide local excision, we prefer the transoral approach. Uh, it's a female. We don't need. Uh, we don't like a neck incision, uh, a face incision. So it's a posterior location, I know, but we can by adequate exposure we can go there. So here is the defect after resection of the tumor, and I advise you a very very easy and simple flap. It's a buccal bed of fat, but it has limits for the site. It has just like for the size. I I mean. Uh, maybe maximum three to four centimeter defect to be covered by the buccal bed of fat. Very easy to deliver and very easy to close the defect. And here is the buccal bed of fat after complete mucosalization 45 days after surgery. Buccal bed of fat, it will be very, very useful to you for small oral lesion. You can put it here. You can put it on the retromoral trigone. You can put on a small bilateral defect, small defect here. But uh, it's on, it's easy, easy harvesting, uh, very, very simple, but the problem is it's size limited. You cannot, you cannot uh, put it on a more than three to four centimeter defect. But if it goes, it's very simple and very easy, like this case. Uh, it's a small ulcer here. You can face a large ulcer like this with a large defect like this. And here is a buccal bed of fat but we didn't prefer in such case because it will not cover all this defect. We choose, he is a male, he have beard and uh, the face incision may be masked by beard. We choose a nasolabial flap from his face and put it in the oral cavity like this to close the defect and this primary closure of the donor side. Uh, reconstruction, it's a tailored decision. Uh, every patient, male differ from a female, young male, young patient differ in thinking in the strategy from an old patient. Comorbidities, heavy smoker, cardiac diseases, a patient cannot withstand a long surgery, or even the patient expectations. Uh, some patients need a free flap, uh, do me the pace. I can withstand a one month stay in the, in the hospital. I'm generally fit, I can withstand the 10 to 12 hour surgery. So it, it differ. it's a tailored decision. My, my message, it's no case is like the other. Uh, pack, you can see here a major buccal ulcer starting from the retromolar trigon here, actually reaching the lips, infiltrating part of the mandible. This is a surgical defect. You can find no buccal mucosa. Here is a buccal bed of fat, but sure, it will not cover one out of 10 of the defect. Uh, here is a buccal bed, not suitable for a huge defect like this. You, uh, here we did a, a marginal mandibulectomy, not a segmental. We left uh, a syndrome of the mandible because the tumor was a bit superficial. And here again, the neck, the vessels, the carotid, the jugular. So now the resection is completed. This is incompatible with life. The patient can't live. So we have to reconstruct this defect. We used again a very preferable option to me, especially the sobraclavicular island flap. This part, this part, the most distal part, will form the oral, the buccal mucosa, and this is, must be medical. This part, this two centimeter, are the blood supply for the flap. Any injury here, any twist, any kink, any hematoma, the flap will die. Ah, we put a blatant screw, a uh, blatant screw just for strengthening the mandible. And here is the flap, as you can see, this was the most distal part. This area is the buccal mucosa coming from here. This is the flap. This. The, is this, this distal end is this, you can see now. 
This is a patient one and a half months after surgery, six months complete mucosalization. As you can see here, some mucosalized areas appear and the patient have a good, yeah, maybe some uh, angle deviation to use a marginal mandibular nerve affection. Here is the donor side of the flap. It's working in a well in a 70 years old male patient, diabetic, hypertensive, and not suitable for a pre flap surgery. Vertical the flap is safer and better in such patients. And lastly, to the tongue, tongue, tongue cancer, and mostly a very, very aggressive tumor, actually. Tongue cancers, you can have a very small ulcer like this. You can do a transoral resection, like you see here. This is the defect, and very simply, and don't, don't forget the neck, the neck lymph node. And here's the, de the defect is closed primarily with no significant mobility because actually you remove a very, very small part of the mucosa and a superficial part of the muscle. So you can close primarily, very simple, transoral approach. You remove the tumor and this is a tumor. This is much more size than the tumor because wide local excision, WLE. You remove the tumor with safety margin. And the tongue is very, very important, the dips, the dips. Uh, primary closure, very simple. Then you will close this incision primarily, no incision in the face and it's done. But here, here, this is a bigger ulcer, a more posterior ulcer, a major, a, a bigger defect in the tongue. This is called partial glossectomy. You, re, you didn't remove half the tongue, half the tongue is hemiglossectomy. You remove just part of half the tongue. So it's called partial glossectomy. You can close this primarily. But, but many, many problems happen. You will have an inferior functional outcome, an inferior aesthetic outcome. Uh, whatever. He, uh, patients actually don't like to protrude their tongues. They always close their mouth from the bad cosmetic uh, outcome. Me, myself, I don't prefer uh, partial, uh, primary closure after partial glycectomy. We have many, many options like this. We use a myomucosal flap from the same side of the buccal mucosa. Here is a buccal bed of fat again. Uh, we use this part to cover the tongue. So this is the flap coming from here and this part will be closed primarily and the buccal bed will close part of the defect. This, this is the donor side. I took a part from here to complete the tongue. To com it's myomucosal. I must take the vaccinator muscle with me because actually the blood supply to this part of the mucosa is from underneath the vaccinator muscle. This is called a myomucosal flap, facial artery myomucosal flap. So we started with a small defect like this, small ulcer like this, to a bigger ulcer like this, a bigger defect like this, and come to the major, major surgery of the tongue, which is called CTS, compartmental tongue surgery. A very, very large ulcer of the uh, left side of the tongue, and you can see here infiltration of the floor of the mouth. Wide local excision of such lesion will result in a compartmental resection. Like the other case I showed you, you remove part of the tongue, the floor of the mouth, and the lymph nodes. You have an oral cervical fistula. And this is the right side of the tongue. You have, we have a formal glossectomy, hemiglossectomy. You remove all the left side of the tongue. We just have half the tongue. This is called a hemiglossectomy, specifically here, a left hemiglossectomy. And by a compartmental tongue surgery, as you can see, we can pass an instrument down from the neck to uh, inside the oral cavity. Here we choose a flap from the thigh. It's called anterolateral thigh, and it's again a free flap. Uh, unlike the big trellis, unlike the supraclap, we have a free flap. This is this will form the tongue later, and this is the artery and the vein will which will be anastomosed with micro anastomosis, uh, surgical microscope to the neck visits. And this is the tongue, the new tongue. Actually, this is the, from the side. This skin is from the patient's leg. This is the right normal tongue, the left tongue, the left synthetic tongue, but actually it's not in a factory, it's from her side. And this is six months after surgery. Uh, another case, uh, and actually this is our youngest, youngest um, tongue cancer patient. She is a female and she is 17 years old. And uh, it's the youngest patient in my practice and not my practice in our oncology center practice. And actually uh, three cases all worldwide 
uh, are reported with stomach cancer below 20 years old. Actually, uh, I started to uh, write it as a case report, but unfortunately, the patient died six months after surgery and uh, I lost interest after her death to write a case report. Here we have a very, very advanced tongue cancer in a young female, 17 years, non-smoker, no history of radiotherapy, no specific risk factor for developing tongue cancer. And this is what strange, this is very strange to um, a 17 years, a female to have tongue cancer with this major advancement. Very, very advanced disease. This is the flap. Uh, I don't want to um, repeat. This part is from the radial forearm. This is from the arm, from like I showed you this part. And again, microvascular anastomosis. But unfortunately, the patient died six months after surgery. We need to be together. We cannot work alone. Please help us. We don't want to see these photos. 83 years female from Sinai with this is a fungation from tongue cancer. You can imagine this is a tongue cancer infiltrating the mandible and you can see here the teeth actually fall from the oral cavity. The patient is left untreated for two years. Two years of tongue cancer, you can imagine this will happen. And this is uh, a non-correctable treatment or management of alveolar squamous cell carcinoma. You are playing with fire. Don't play with oral cavity cancer. With the best management, they recur and they metastasize. So you can imagine if you don't manage them adequately. We have these cases. Help us not to find them again, please. A major tongue cancer case, a recurrence of the tongue, mostly filling all of the oral cavity, a fungating lymph node, again, in a like 40 years female patient. And uh, this uh, emphasizes my speaking that we are not treating cancer pathology. There is a biological factor why the 17 years female had this advanced tongue cancer, why this patient had a horrible recurrence after surgery. Uh, actually, these false sickness cheek defects are very, very, very uh, challenging, very, very hard to reconstruct. And actually, even if we remove and reconstruct, uh, the prognosis is very, very, very bad. A major defect again, you need to two major flaps to reconstruct, to restore the continuity of the oral cavity and the skin defect. You have a major skin defect. Again, a major defect, full sickness, cheek defect. This case was a buccal cancer, a recurrent buccal cancer. Uh, resection of the recurrence included all this major resection. We have no other option. The problem is head and neck cancer patients, they metastasize late. So this patient have a very advanced oral disease, but she's not metastatic. She has a chance to live. She can live. She can live. Uh, sure, it's from Allah, but I mean, by science, by logic, if she's not metastatic, she have a good chance to survive more years. So you don't have other option except a major resection and reconstruction. Actually, when we find these cases, we hope, uh, we actually, we deeply hope they are metastatic so we can leave them to die in base. But unfortunately, or for them maybe fortunately, they are not metastatic. So it's a local disease. You have, you have no other option other than resection and reconstruction. Major defect, major defect, a major defect, a very, very major defect. Here is the oropharynx, the endotracheal intubation. This is the tongue, the remaining part of the tongue. No mandible, no floor, no buccal cavity. You have to do a major flap. This case, I think we did, uh, as I remember, a pectoralis major, but it was not, was not enough. We used a latissimus dorsi muscle from the back. The pectoralis major was to restore the continuity of the oral cavity. The latissimus dorsi is for the outer skin defect. Your help will prevent these circumstances. Early diagnosis and management is the best option. So, what is the prognosis of oral cancer? Actually, oral cancer are a distributable cancer. Oral cancers are a distributable cancer. Because most of the have a very high recurrence rate, very high morbidity, very challenging, very lengthy operations, very fragile patients. So it's among us, it's a distributable cancer. We measure uh, reputation of the cancer by a disease-free survival and overall survival. 
DFS is a disease-free survival. How long the patient lived with no disease? And overall survival, how long the patient lived even if he had disease? He may have a recurrent disease and, uh, and uh, like uh, survive for one year after. So uh, the disease-free survival sure is shorter than the overall survival. Actually, disease-free survival and overall survival in advanced, uh, advanced oral cancers are very, very short. Uh, five years survival for locally advanced oral cancers is like 54%, so half of the patients will not live five years. Uh, again, in early stage cancer, the five year survival reached 82%, a major difference in survival. Again, the neck, the neck, lymph node metastasis, if you have to choose a single most important prognostic factor is a lymph node metastasis. A major, a very, a very big tongue cancer with no lymph node metastasis is much better prognosis than a small tongue cancer with lymph node metastasis. Actually, lymph node metastasis halves half the overall survival. If you have a lymph node metastasis, you know that this patient will live half the other patient with no lymph node metastasis lived. So a single, the single most important prognostic factor is cervical lymph node metastasis. For so, examination of the lymph nodes from the start is very, very important. Adequate assessment, radiological and biological assessment is very, very crucial for oral cancer. How to follow up these patients? Uh, actually, they have high risk of local recurrence, regional recurrence, and secondary primary tumor. You may treat a tongue cancer, and you um, don't, surpri don't be surprised if after uh, two years you find a buccal cancer or a buccal cancer, and then develop a tongue cancer, and so secondary primary cancers. It's very, very common in oral cancer practice. Uh, sure, lifestyle, lifestyle modifications is very, very important. You have to stop smoking, you have to stop alcoholism, you have to have a good oral hygiene after your surgery and after your management of oral cancer. And owing to the high risk of local recurrence and regional recurrence, you have to strict follow up your patients. Actually, in the first year, we see our patient every month, for example, after this, uh, a bit lower, maybe every three months and so. And what's very, very important, is that any, any, any complaint, don't never neglect. Don't give antibiotic on an, a resistant ulcer. Don't give oral hygiene and mouthwash on an ulcer that doesn't respond. You have to diagnose infection from cancer. Very, very uh, mistake or malpractice to find the late advanced cases uh, from a misdiagnosed or um, incorrect management. And finally, to conclude, the treatment outcome of oral cancer in recent decades has improved with the advancement in reconstructive surgery and adjuvant treatment. And what's meant by adjuvant treatment is the chemotherapy and radiotherapy after surgery. Oral cancer prevention is the first step. If you have to prevent, this is the best option actually. <laughs> but uh, we have oral cancers. If you have, you have to early diagnose and early management and management on an oncological management based on the international guidelines, multidisciplinary approach, don't take your decision alone. If you are um, a good surgeon, you know how to remove, don't ever remove without consulting your radiotherapist, chemotherapist, nutritionist, you, the dentist, as a major role in our job in reconstruction, in our decision and so. So uh, the advice is not to take your decision alone. And finally, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank my great Oncology Center, Mansoura University, for this great chance to educate and to learn and to do. My dear seniors and colleagues and juniors, specifically Dr. Amir uh, Mossad, Amir Abu Naga is very, very uh, interested in the neck surgery as me. And thank you very much for your invitation and I'm ready for any comments or inquiries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shadi. Uh, please, if we, anyone here has a question, please raise your hand. Dr. Iman Salah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fadali ya doctor. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ازيك يا دكتور شادي نورتنا والله يا دكتور انا بس بقول لك شكرا يعني على المبادره الممتازه دي ربنا انا مش سامع كويس بس يعني ربنا يخليك انا سمعت نورتنا ربنا يخليك شكرا anybody has a question 
اول رايت ان ذا شات بليز دكتور محمد العزا بتفضل حضرتك دكتور محمد انا سامع حضرتك اتفضل السلام عليكم وعليكم اهلا دكتور محمد اتفضل دكتور شادي ربنا يبارك في حضرتك متشكرين جدا محاضرة ممتعة جدا واهم ما فيها طبعا ربنا يبارك في حضرتك يا رب العالمين الحقيقة حضرتك ركزت في نقطة مهمة جدا مسألة الدنتست رول انه يعمل ايرلي دايجنوزس ويعمل ديسكفرنج للليجن بدري وازاي ان ده بيفرق قوي قوي مع البيشنت في مسألة بيفرق جدا 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 في البروجنوز فدي مسألة يعني الحقيقة فعلا مهمة قوي قوي وافتكر يمكن في بيشنس كتير جولكم بيقولوا اه ده احنا اتعالجنا من الالسر دي بان احنا اخدنا اورال جيل فترة طويلة او كتير يعني الحقيقة دي مشكلتنا كتيرة جدا الحالات بتيجي في ليت ستيج ادفانسد ستيج طيب انا كنت حابب اسال حضرتك آه انتوا بتفضلوا في المركز انه البيشنت يجي معمول له آه حاجه زي انسيجنال بايوبسي مثلا ولا انه يجي ما عملش اي حاجه يعني انا جه بيشنت المركز حضرتك عارف انه المركز بيفد عليه اعداد كبيره ومنها حالات راحت مركز الاورام كتير فهل بتفضلوا ان الحالات دي يتعمل لها بايوبسيز الاول قبل ما تيجي ولا لا؟ جود كويشن احنا عندنا استعداد كامل uh, نبدا بالحاله uh, من اول الكلينيكال سسبيشنس يعني لو حضرتك شاكك بس ان هي ممكن تكون حاجه وي ار مور ذان ويلكم مرحبين جدا ان هي تيجي ونبدا نفحصها وناخد لها البايوبسي وكل حاجه بس ما عندناش اي مشكله خالص ان حضراتكم تاخدوا البايوبسي بس بال, 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 بال يعني بيبقى رخم شويه لما نقول لعين هناخد عينه مرتين فلو هناخد البايوبسي هتريحونا طبعا بس الاهم حاجه ان هو ناخدها بالانكولوجي تولز اللي قلنا عليها علشان تشخص وما نتعبش العيان بتاعنا في عينه ثانيه انتوا ممكن عندكم اوبشن احسن في البايوبسي انتوا عندكم كراسي الاسنان العيان ممكن يبقى قاعد يطف يعمل انما احنا عندنا معظم البايوبسي حتى بتبقى بجنرال لان انا هنايم العيان جنرال عشان اعرف اشتغل في بقه كويس فلو خدتوا العينه ده يعني هيبقى شكرا جزيلا من حضراتكم بس انا بس في مشكله كبيره جدا في الـ في الاورال باثولوجي انا بس في يعني حاجه عايز اقولها قصه كده علشان عندنا مشكله كبيره جدا مع الاورال باثولوجي احنا عملنا كومبارتمنتال سيرجري يعني ميجر سيرجري ميجر اكسيجن وريسكشن في عيانه وطلعت كومبليتلي فري فروم ذا تيومر وكانت جايه من اسنان من كليه طب اسنان مش من حضراتكم بانسيجنال بايوبسي ميوكو ابيدرمويد كارسينوم واعتمدنا على كده ودخلنا في ميجر سيرجري وميجر ريكونستراكشن الحمد لله العينه كويسه كل حاجه بس ما لقيناش اي باثولوجي آه فمن الحاله دي اي باثولوجي بيتعمل بنراجعه عندنا في المركز عشان يبقى على السيستم يبقى يعني دي حاجات يعني لوجستيه يعني العينه تبقى متراجعه عين عندنا عشان ما يحصلش حاجه زي دي فلو في امكانيه ان احنا ميتنجز اكتر بعد كده ويبقى في كونتاكت مع الباثولوجيست هيبقى طبعا احسن كتير وسؤال حضرتك سبيسيفيكالي على العينه مفيش اي مشكله خالص ان حضراتكم تاخدوا العينه هتسهلوا علينا وهتوفروا علينا خطوه اكيد انتوا كده لما تشخصوا احنا هنبدا بالستيجنج يعني هبدا اشوف التي الان الام وابدا اقول احط المرحله وابدا خطه علاجي لو بعتوه مش متشخص هنبدا من الدياجنوز فاحنا ما عندناش مشكله في كده بس المهم لما العينه تتاخد تتاخد كويس عشان تشخص عشان ما نتعبش العيان في عينه ثانيه. لان كمان العيان بيفقد الثقه شويه، طب اشمعنى؟ طب ناخد عينه ثانيه ليه؟ طب هتابع شويه، وانتم عارفين طبعا العيان المصري ما بيصدق يعني لو بتحلف ان هي مليجنا انتوا خدت له عينه طلعت كويسه ولا انفلاميشن ولا مش عارف ايه، هيقول لك خلاص اتابعها، ويجي لنا بعد شهرين ثلاثه طبعا بكارثه كبيره. صحيح. بتهيألي احنا الكونتاكت معاكم كان كويس في الحالات اللي بعتناها الحمد لله غير الحاله اللي حضرتك آه كان كويس جدا الحقيقه. كويس جدا وحضرتك بالذات استاذ محمد يعني كذا حاله خدناها من بدري جدا واشتغلنا عليها والفيدباك من الحاله نفسها كان كويس يعني عشان ايرلي مانجمنت ايرلي دايجنوز ايرلي تريتمنت الحاله اكيد في الاخر كله البيشنت مايندد الحاله في الاخر هتبقى مستفيده. تمام كنت حابب اسال حضرتك برضو على الاوت كام بتاع البيديكال فلاب فيرسس الفري فلاب كلينيكالي اللي موجوده في المركز. آه ما تحكش على حضرتك انا رسالتي في الدكتوراه كانت الفري فلابس 
طيب. وطبعا يعني قضيت سنتين من عمري يعني فيري فيري تاف تو ييرز من البراكسنج بتاعت المايكرو سيرجري ومشاكلها كتيره جدا طبعا آه عشان اكون صريح احنا ام نوت 100% كواليفايد فور فري فلاج يعني وي كان دو وي دو ميني كيسز بات ذا اوت كم شور فور اس از بيديكال ديفلابس از مور سيفر فور اور نوليدج مثلا الجراح اللي كنت عنده في ايطاليا هو الفيرست اوبشن بالنسبه له هو الفري فلاج يعني هو اول حاجه يعملها الفري فلاج فشل حصل مشكله يبقى عنده البيديكال ديفلاب هو الباك اب الحقيقه هنا يعني فيري ستريكت كرايتيريا يعني مختار عيان صغير عيان مش هيفي سموكر عيان ما عندوش القلب لان طبعا بيمشي على انتي كوجيليشن فتره كبيره جدا بعد العمليه ال ال بنبقى محتاجين اسيستنس من ساعات بيبقى معانا بلاستيك سيرجنز في المايكرو انستموز فيعني تو بي اونست البيديكال ديفلاب هو اللي مضمون 100% بس طبعا طبعا الفري فلاب هو بيتر فانكشنال ريسيتيك اوت كام اند بيتر دونر سايت موربيتي فاحنا بنشتغل فري فلاب بس طبعا يعني لو 10 حالات بيديكال بنشتغل حاله فري برضه حضرتك لما كنت بتتكلم على الفاين نيدل اسبيريشن امتى حضرتك بتحتاج تعمل فاين نيدل اسبيريشن بعد ما شفت في الالترا سونوجرافي انه اللينف نودز انكلودد الحقيقه في البراكتس بتاعنا في المركز اورال كانسر دايجنوزد اورال كانسر والليمف نود بالراديولوجي بالالترا ساوند سسبيشس وي جو دايركتلي فور نيك دايسكشن ويزاوت فناك فروم ذا ليمف نود بات ان سام سنترز اوت سايد ايجيبت ام سبيكينج اوت سايد ايجيبت فناك از ا ماست بيفور يو اتاك ذا نيك ما تشيلش ابدا اي غدد ليمفوي من الرقبه الا بعينه موسبه بس حاجات عشان التامين وعشان الميديكال جالكسي وكده انما هنا في مصر اورال كانسر دايجنوز الليمف نودز بالالترا ساوند سسبيشس وي جو دايركتلي فور سيرجن الالترا ساوند سنسيتيفيتي بتاعته اكتر من 95% في الليمف نودز يعني عشان واحد يقول ان دي سسبيشس ليمف نود بالالترا ساوند وهي مش سسبيشس يبقى يعني صعب قوي لان هي فيري اكيوريت دايجنوز تمام احنا الحقيقه شاكرين جدا دكتور شاد النهارده كانت امسيه سعيده بوجود حضرتك و انا يا رب ما اتقلت عليكم بحاجات الاورام بتاعتنا الصعبه الرخمه شويه دي يا رب اكون كنت ضيف خفيف عليكم يا رب اكون يعني دكتور سالي دكتور سالي اتفضل الو السلام عليكم السلام عليكم انا مش سامع حضراتكم صوتي مسموع ولا في مشكله كده مسموع يا دكتور اتفضلي ميرسي جدا يا دكتور شادي بصراحه المحاضره يعني كويسه جدا انا زميلت وجو فكين في مستشفى امبابه العام تمام معلش أنا يعني حضرتك اتفضلي اه اتفضلي انا بس كنت عايزه اسال على يعني البيت سكان يعني هل هي رول ان احنا على طول بنعملها ولا في حالات معينه وتيومر ماركرز فيري 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 امبورتنت كويشن اند ام فيري سوري ان انا نسيت اقولها انا كان المفروض اقولها مع الراديولوجيكال اسسمنت الاول عايزين نعرف موضوع البيت سي تي البيت سي تي في ثلاث مراكز بس في مصر بيعملوه uh, معهد قومي الاورام uh, 57 3 57 ومركز خاص في القاهره البيت سي تي ب 7000 جنيه او من 5 ل 7 في هنا في المنصوره ريسنتلي في مستشفى الخير مركز خاص برضو بس البيت سي تي ب 6000 جنيه تقريبا يعني اكتر من 5000 البيت سي تي مالوش رول قوي في الاورال كانسر لسبب واحد الاورال كانسرز لو هتبقى ميتاستاتيك غالبا اولا الميتاستاتيك بوتنشال بتاع الاورال كانسرز فيري فيري ليت يعني غير البريست غير الليفر غير البلادر يعني الاورال كانسر رخامتها ان هي او ممكن تكون حاجه كويسه للعيان اللي هو مش هيموت بدري لان الريكارنس هيجي لوكال هيجي بقه هيجي هيرتجع في الرقبه في البق انما الديستنت ميتاسيس قليله شويه والسي تي شيست ممكن يوضح لنا قوي في لانج ميتاسيس ولا لا. بات تو بي اونست في الحتت الغاليه يعني شمال ايطاليا ما فيش عيان بيعمل عمليه كبيره زي اللي انا وريتها لكم دي ريسكشن اند ريكونستراكشن من غير ابدا بيت سي تي بس هنا احنا بنتحايل على الظروف شويه ان احنا بنعمل سي تي شيست كبديل عن البيت سي تي لو في حاله ادفانسد كيس قوي بقى يعني حاله شايفينها يعني بقى لها لونج ستاندنج بقى لها سنتين مثلا هيستوري او كده نقدر نعمل لها بيت سي تي بس المشكله ان احنا حتى لو حابين نعمل بيت ياخد ميعاد وكده والموضوع طبعا بيبقى صعب جدا 
احنا بالمناسبه يعني احنا الحمد لله جبنا اجزاء من البيت سيتي في مركز الاورام عندنا وان شاء الله ان شاء الله على بدايه السنه الجديده يكون البيت سيتي شغال واكيد ده هيغير شويه في البراكتس بتاعنا في الاورال كانسر شكرا جدا دكتور شيري طيب والتيومر ماركرز يعني كذا حد قال لي ان كذا حد قال لي الموضوع ده نو رول فور تيومر ماركر ان اورال كانسر الممكن الوحيد اللي انا اتكلمت عليه لان هو اللي عليه ديبيت شويه اللي هو الهيومن بابيلوما فيروس ال اتش بي في وقلت لحضرتك هو مهم جدا بنشخص تونسيلر تيومر او بوستيريو فرنجيال وول او كده ده كيمو راديو سيرابي انما الاورال كانسرز اكشولي نو رول فور تيومر ماركر متشكرين جدا يا دكتور شادي بصراحه جزاك الله خير يعني بصراحه محاضره كويسه مميزه تسلم شكرا 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 ليك الساده الاطباء في حد اي لي اي سؤال دكتور اماني اتفضلي حضرتك دكتور شادي ميرسي على المحاضره الجميله دي شكرا لحضرتك ربنا يخليك وما نحترمش منك ومن ذوقك ومن قبولك الدعوه و... ده انا اتشرف بدعوه حضراتكم و... وانا مبسوط جدا ويا رب اكون كنت ضيف ظريف على حضرتك لا ده جميل والله يا دكتور شادي مبسوط جدا محاضره جميله وان شاء الله المره الجايه يكون الامور احسن ونتقابل في المركز على خير يا رب دكتور كريم اتفضل سعادتك يا شادي شكرا خالص يعني يا رب ببساطة دكتور أمان يا رب يكون المحاضرة كويسة طبعا يا كريم والله المحاضرة جميلة جدا ما شاء الله وشادي ما شاء الله عليه متميز ربنا يبارك فيك ربنا يخليك يا دكتور أمان أنا بس أنا عايز أسأله شكرا ليك في حاجة بس معلش عشان يبقى السؤال لينا كلنا برضو إحنا يا شادي عندنا في العيادة الدايجنوزس في مركز احنا بنشوف حالات الالسرز كتير قوي وبنشوف حالات يعني ليكو بليكيا كتير بنشوف يعني كيسز والسرز مينلي احنا كل حاله المفروض لو شفنا او شكينا في حاله سسبيشس انها تكون تيومر احنا المفروض هنعمل دايجنوز الليمف نود في كل الحالات دي يعني لا طبعا الدايجنوز الليمف نود افتر دايجنوز اوف ذا برايمري انا لما لما اشخص ان انا انسى في الاورال كافيتي ابدا ادور ان هو ممكن ينتشر في الـ في, الـ في النك ولا لا انما وزاوت اورال دايجنوز اي دونت هاف تو شيك ذا نك يعني هو الرقبه مش هتحصل ليمف نود من غير ما يكون في برايمري تيومر بالظبط بس قلقان يكون الالسر دي عامله انفيجن او عامله ميتاستس في الليمف نود والعيان ما بيشتكيش والله الكلينيكال اكزامينيشن هو الانترا اورال انا قلت الاكسترا اورال لا يقل اهميه عن الانترا اورال اكزامينيشن مش هتخسر حاجه ابدا وانت بتفحص بق العيان ان انت تحط ايدك على الليمف نودز جروب لو في حاسس اي ليمف نود انلارجد حاسس اي حاجه مش طبيعيه كلنا عندنا ليمف نودز بس مش انلارجد مش حاسين بيها انما لو اي لينك نود حسستها في الرقبه آه لازم طبعا تبروسيد لالترا ساوند ولو الالترا ساوند شايف فيه اي سسبيشس كرايتيريا اتس بيتر تو دو ا فاين نيدل وساعات كتير بتطلع انفلاماتوري يعني عادي واحد بيخلع درس وعنده تسوس بيحصل له انفلاماتوري لينك نود اتس نوت ا ماست تو بي كانسر بس ماست بي بوت ان يور اكزامينشن اكزامين ذا انترا اورال كافيتي اند اكزامين اكسترا اورالي واهم حاجه في الاكسترا اورال هو النك شو تمام اوكي 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 شكرا طيب استاذ الاطباء في حد جه اي سؤال؟ وانا عندي توضيح بس بخصوص الاريستروبليكيا والليكوبليكيا الليكوبليكيا موجوده كتيره في الكوميونتي الاريستروبليكيا دون ايفر فولو اب الاريستروبليكيا بليز يعني اي اريستروبليكيا ذا ريسك اوف ذا بيشنت لان الليكوبليكيا بروت شويه فيها هوموجينس فيها هيتروجينس فيها اليفيتد فيها فيروكس فالليكوبليكيا اللي ممكن يعني ممكن نتكلم فيها ممكن نتابع ممكن نبص على العين شويه انما الاريستروبليكيا بليز دونت دو ويفضل لو عيان هاي ريسك بيشنت هيفي سموكر الكحولي اي حاجه من دي وعنده ليكوبليكيا واي نوت ريموف ما بدل ما تسيبها ست شهور وسنه وتحصل عليها اون توب فيت كارسينوم لو سمول لوكاليزد ليكوبليكيا والله نشيلها هتخسر ايه ماينور سيرجري غرزه Uh, في تو بري كانسرس ليجن مشهورين قوي في في تجويف الفم ليكوبليكيا اند اريستروبليكيا احنا قلنا الاريستروبليكيا الريد باتشز فيري فيري برون تو مالجنت ترانسفورميشن ما تتابعش حاله اريستروبليكيا خد منها بايوبسي وتطمن uh, الليكوبليكيا ده منتشر جدا uh, فلو العيان هاي ريسك بيشنت عيان 
اولد ايج عيان ميل بيشنت سموكر الكحوليك ليه انت بعته ليكو بليكيا طب ما هي ليجن صغيره ممكن تقلب بعد كده بكانسر شيلها يعني في الاول الموضوع هيبقى بسيط لو سبتها وتحولت لكانسر هيبقى الموضوع ميجر هيعمل فولو اب والعيان محتاج عايز يتابع مش عايز جراحه اوكي بس ستريكت فولو اب كل شهر نبص عليه على الاقل يعني تمام يا دكتور دكتور اماني اسماعيل اتفضلي الله يخليك ميرسي يا دكتور شادي وشكرا على المحاضره الجميله دي شكرا ان شاء الله نتجمع دايما في محاضرات ثانيه و... ان شاء الله في المركز الله يخليك ميرسي للدعوه الجميله دي انت قابلتها معانا نورونا تحت امرك الله يخليك الله يخليك الف الف شكر الف الف شكرا جزيلا ليكم وكنت فرحان جدا و...